Hello there Aries, welcome to your tarot reading and uh, I hope this reading still resonates and that it is still relevant to you as we progress through the month of December. Um, first off, I want to preface this by saying I feel like a lot of this, the energies, the cards that are coming through, it denotes to me um, a, a love reading, okay? Um, and I feel like, you know, this portion over here is for singles and then this is like for coupled people. Um, I have two images that came out so let me just um, talk to you about the images, we'll unpack them and then see how they relate to the cards, okay? Um, first of all, what I'm seeing here is um, when I was shuffling out the, the first four cards here, I saw this man, He's um, he's got like his hiking gear, okay, so he's wearing like um, um, a, it, it looks almost like a, a windbreaker and he's dressed really warm, he has a, a, a beanie on, he has like khaki and like a pair of hiking boots and he's got one of those uh, walking sticks with him. So he, he looks really young, like 30, but he's going up this mountain, he's going up this really steep incline. The weather seems a little bit cold and kind of uh, dewy, like misty. So all I see is the back of him. He's wearing khaki, like brown khaki pants and like almost like a um, orange yellow windbreaker with like, you know, his backpack and he's going up this mountain using the walking stick to kind of guide his way. And then as soon as he reaches the summit, um, the, 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 the view pans out and he's looking down below at this really beautiful lake, okay? It's really far away and there's, there's, it's just like sparkling blue lake. So on the ascension, so when he's going up the, the incline to, to reach the summit, everything felt really gray and you know very wet and soggy and just uncomfortable and, and and cold and a little bit like just soggy just like uncomfortable and i feel like you know that might not be a comfortable place to 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 be in but he he trudged on he kept moving forward and as soon as he got to the summit the the he's like really on top of you know the mountain and everything just cleared up so i started to see you know a break in the sky blue like blue skies shimmering through and then this beautiful we uh, view of this blue sparkling water down below so he's looking at this lake in the distance really far below him and he's just like this is an amazing view and he takes in the view he rests there for for a moment and he's kind of thinking, I really wish I have some somebody to to share this experience with me, okay? And so when I saw that, I was thinking that everything in your life is going really splendidly well, especially when it comes to your career, because I feel like you're at that point where you've reached the summit, you've made it, you've drudged on, you have um, dealt with just uh, a lot of changes in your work environment I feel where things were a little bit hazy a little bit muddled you put one foot in front of the other and you're just like I'm gonna cross that bridge when it get when I get there if there are obstacles rocks strewn in your path you've got that walking stick and you just you know uh, kept going kept going and you knew the day would come where where you can like be on top of that summit, claim your space and claim your territory and especially claim your role in a specific situation and, and you know being able to tell people your contributions, your assets, being able to kind of like conquer all the obstacles in the work environment and you've made it. The sky is breaking and you know there's like um, the, 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 the patchy, the foggy, the overcast weather is moving out of the way, making way for blue skies. So I feel like for many of you, you're kind of like the it girl, the it guy when it comes to your career. People might come to you, ask for, you know, ask for input, ask, ask for counsel. And I do feel income generating potential is very, very high for you guys. Once again, that summit, okay? Um, 
I also sense, you know, when it comes to the summit, right? Um, there's no place to, to go up, right? So you've already reached the top. And so for many of you, you might be at a point where you're kind of contemplating, you know, the, the next mountain, the next hill, the next summit that you want to conquer. You might be already at some type of a, a peak of your income capability when it comes to a specific position, a specific, a specific job. Um, no matter how much more you do, it's like there's an income cap, okay? And so you're thinking like, what's my next step? What's the next thing that I can conquer? Uh, what's the next location even that I can, you know, see myself in? What's the change in career? Um, I don't feel like it's a drastic change in career. I just feel like, you know, what's the, can I, can I jump from this summit to another one and keep ascending? Okay. So I, I do see a lot of ambition, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication that you devote to uh, when it comes to your craft and the things that you do. And I honestly feel like you're lone wolfing it because, you know, with this man climbing that mountain by himself, um, people tend to, I, I feel like, uh, hold you back, okay? Um, if you were left to your own devices, I feel like you can advance really fast. Uh, the professional sphere or your 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 work life, I feel like it's always a steady um, climb, and 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 that area has always gone really really well. Okay, so I feel for many of you, you, you you've made it um, professionally. You're exactly where you want to be. You've already maxed out even for many of you and you're thinking about like the next stage, okay? The next evolution of your professional life. Uh, on the other hand, whenever you have a partner in your life, I feel for many um, Aries people, it's really hard to be in a relationship because it involves a lot of compromise. It involves a lot of patience. It involves a lot of like um discussions and you know emotional exchange and i feel like you don't have time for that i feel like it doesn't it i i feel like you feel going through life not everything has to be a discussion why can't we just you know be on the same page and move forward why do we have to talk about every little thing why do we have to you know um it's like uh kicking a dead horse like if there's like a snag in the relationship we have to sit there and and you know talk it out and and talk through it why do we have to do those things we can just agree to disagree and move on so i feel like you might not have um put in the proper time the proper nurturing the proper amount of patience in order for your relationship to foster or to thrive and to grow and to build the way that your professional life has been okay and so i feel like a lot of you have kind of compensated you know pouring a lot of your time and resources and energy and and just mental power progressing in that professional space and the emotional side, I feel like it's put on the back burner. It's also might have been neglected and it might not have just been important enough for you to really take it seriously. And because you're pouring your energy into work, income, money and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like for the month of December and, um, you know, it, we're, we're hedging towards the holiday season and a lot of the times we have like fa family gatherings friends gathering um christmas parties and everyone is there with their significant other with their spouse with their children and everyone is projecting this image of a happy home and i feel especially for those of you who um are single you're gonna feel a little bit of like the, the pangs of jealousy it's sort of like you know i'm hot stuff i'm successful i'm really really thriving professionally why am I still single? Like, I feel that energy coming out, okay? And then I also feel like a lot of you are reminiscing as well, you know, about past relationships. Like, 
that was a really nice person. Why didn't things work out? Or that was one person that I really, really cared for. Why didn't it work out? Okay. And so there's a little bit of a mixed bag here. And that's why I mentioned, you know, this is a very much like a relationship reading because I see you making a lot of money. You know, finances is flowing very smoothly. And it's just the relationship hiccups and the relationship sector that requires a little bit more work. Okay, so let me just um, point out a few things here. We have here the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is pretty much, you know, you're in a space of like um, financial abundance. Okay, financial stability. You, For many of you, you're in a position where you're contemplating buying property. You might have your own property that you're taking really good care of. You might be in a physical property that is growing tremendously in property value okay so something is appreciating very very fast and so you're sitting on a pile of money and uh, i literally see the scrooge and um sitting on his pile of coins okay you have a lot of assets you have a lot of um just a lot of income a lot of disposable income as well to do whatever you want to take trips to to plan extravagant vacations and I do see a lot of planning, a lot of dreaming, a lot of like thinking about what could be, thinking about the next step. And yet you're still sitting on this pile of money. And so I would say, you know, uh, take that money and do something with it. Travel, see the world, do whatever it is to expand your horizon, go hiking somewhere in an exotic location, whatever it is to clear your mind and to, you know, reward yourself, okay? Um, I feel that um, you're sitting literally sitting on a pile of money you could invest it you could you know consult a financial advisor you could um, I do feel that spiritually and emotionally you might need a vacation and you might want to go it, it's like um, taking that leap of faith and going on on a vacation or taking a big trip like an extravagant trip i feel especially for those who are single you really want to save that trip for that special person that you really want to you know travel with you want to you you want your trip to be you know romantic you want it to include another person and so you're waiting 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 and in the meantime you're just sitting on a pile of money okay which is great there's no complaints there um the other thing that i was seeing as well is um what was that image okay so going back to you know the man in the summit and he's kind of thinking to himself i wish i had somebody to share this moment with okay I feel almost like this image of the odd man out, okay? Um, there's something about you coming through for the month of December where you're feeling a little bit out of sorts. You're feeling a little bit out of place. You're feeling like you're not really connecting with the people around you. You're feeling like where you are and where they are aren't on the same wavelengths, okay? And what that means to me is this sense of awkwardness, not knowing what to say. Somebody could be telling you a story and you're just like, that doesn't really interest me. Uh, I don't know how to make conversation. I don't know what else to say. I don't want to feign interest, but at the same time, I don't want to be rude. So I do see that element coming in where there's like an emotional disconnect with the topics being discussed, with the people that you're relating to. And I feel like, you know, it, it has nothing to do with the other person. It's just you're at a, a time in your life where your priorities are different, where the things that you care about are different. And so... I do feel as well, you know, um, seeing everybody around you, people who are married, people with children, and especially for those who are single, you're going to feel a little bit like, is there something wrong with me? Am I not dateable? Um, am I not marriage material? Am I not in a position where s somebody would, you know, want to honestly like offer me commitment? So that's what I'm seeing here. And what I have here is the seven of cups. And the seven of cups is options you know possibilities as well as like all the things that we feel uh, the world is opening up to us okay like doors opening paths opening new people coming into the picture being offered left and right you know 
um, being given um, like invitations, being given, being the life of the party pretty much, okay? And we have here the Four of Swords, and the Four of Swords is some type of arrest, some type of a stoppage when it comes to communication, some type of a situation where we are actively putting ourselves out there, but somehow energetically there's a disconnect. There's like a, an emotional discordance between you and the interaction between you and another person. Or some of you might be, you know, like in online dating, might be really putting yourself out there, might be having um, multiple suitors coming at your door. But for whatever reason, I feel like the, the communication is not really flowing. The emotional connection is not there. And you're also wondering, being blinded, okay? with the um the blindfold on okay being blinded and not knowing what to say not knowing like we're not really connecting emotionally what can i say what can i do and just feeling that sense of like just feeling like the options around you are not 100 percent solid options Okay, so you're in a space where you might be seeing a lot of people, you have a lot of people interested in you, but for whatever reason, these options in your mind you feel are lacking. And this is not to say that you're, you know, uh, turning your nose up at these options. I feel like these options are lacking in that emotional connection. And another thing that I really want to warn you about, okay, and this is like something that is very prominent with Aries, Sagittarius, and Scorpios that I've seen lately, sometimes Aquarius as well. And the energy is, if it doesn't start out in a burst of fireworks and chemistry and passion and excitement, it doesn't feel enough for you. Does that make sense? So I want you to be a little bit careful about that because whatever starts out really fast in a passionate fervor, it will burn itself out okay it fizzles out and you're gonna end up feeling very depleted and so I feel as if in the past you might have had really exciting you know passionate relationships and on the heels of the passionate relationship a normal healthy relationship might seem a little bit dull might seem a little bit like just bleh you know like um, flat like something flat lining and so you are trying to recapture that excitement, that passion in some type of a past relationship, trying to foster that and trying to seek that in the current options that you have. And I just want to urge you to really think about, you know, uh, more about compatibility, more about long term, more about like the stability in a situation. Um, for the long haul. So needless to say, when we are interacting with another person, everything takes time, right? It takes us a long time to really know another person. And so we might, you know, uh, inadvertently say that, oh, somebody, this, this conversation is very flat. This person is very vanilla or this person is very bland and pass up on a really good opportunity. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm trying to say here because I feel like uh, you're craving something extraordinary. You're say, craving something out of this world. You're craving something that is really passionate, that is all fireworks and, and, and fizz and just, you know, a whirlwind romance. And I feel that you have people around you who are a little bit more innocent, who are very sweet, and you're aware of that, and you don't feel like they're, they're partnership material just because they don't immediately exhibit these qualities that you're looking for. You have some really sweet people around you. I have here the Page of Cups. This is someone who's like, um, you know, I, I wanna say, I usually think of this as somebody who's very inexperienced when it comes to love, relationships, intimacy okay it's somebody who's like uh, i want to say a little bit naive they see the best in people they they're 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 the types of people that go around thinking that like oh nobody cheats you know nobody really cheats they're not a cheater they're very sincere very sweet and there's a letters and and cups and messages so th this is a person 
that is very much interested in you they would text you good morning they would text you you know good night before you go to sleep they spend a lot of time to um, I want to say catch your attention they also put in a lot of work and a lot of effort in order to court you and you're gonna know who this is because you know their intentions are very pure they're very straightforward with you but I also feel like you're behaving like this, eight of swords, you know, turning a blind eye, not really taking this person, you know, very seriously, not feeling like this person is experienced enough or mature enough to be with you and not feeling like they are relationship potential because I feel for many of you in the realm of love and relationship and dating and, you know, um, sexual connections, intimacy, you guys are very experienced. You might have dated a lot of people. You might know exactly, you know, what you want. You might, um, you, you might go for a specific type and for whatever reason, this person you feel is like outside of your type, okay? Not exactly your type. Um, you might feel that, oh, they're too nice or they're too naive or they're too inexperienced. I don't know if they're gonna be able to satisfy me, things like that. And I don't really see this for a lot of the signs, but I do sense, you know, with Scorpios, with um, Aquarius, with um, Sagittarius and Aries, this energy comes out a lot where you feel like this person, in terms of life experience, they don't really have anything to offer me. They're not super exciting and I, I want a little bit more excitement. And so be careful of passing on, uh, um, passing over a very good thing, a re really good person, and a potential for a very strong, solid relationship. Um, so, you know, don't judge a book by its cover because I feel like there's a lot more here to be uncovered and there's a lot of um, satisfaction that can be had in this situation because I feel like there's a lot of harmony associated with this person, okay? I feel like they're actively courting you. I feel that they're aware that you have a lot of options. I feel like there's also an age difference between you and this person. Um, I feel that they are very sweet, okay? Like, uh, if, it's a, if it's a man, this is somebody who is like, um, treats women really well, loves his mother, calls her. Um, this is somebody that, you know, open doors for, for the people in their lives. They, they, they seat you down. They put a coat on you when they're, when you're, um, um, when you're cold, you know, they open the door for you. Not that you need any of these things, but you know, this is somebody who's, who's just like really caring. And, um, you know, you might feel like this is mushy. You might feel like this is cheesy. Okay, but I, I do sense that it says a lot for a person uh, about a person when you know they treat their mothers right, when they treat their sisters well, when they treat like the 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 their family members and the people in their life with the utmost respect because they're ready to be a relationship partner. But in some way, you might find this a little bit like bland, a little bit like oh, I'm not sure if I want to get involved. And um, I also feel as well, if sometimes they text you and you might not even return the text because you're not 100% emotionally invested in this person, okay? Um, I feel for some of you, um, especially if you're still, you know, single, I, I feel like you have a lot of options. And you have a lot of options so just just be careful because this is a really good option that you should you know give it some thought give it an a, a chance okay give this person a chance because i i do sense that okay so i'm seeing this so i'm just gonna say it. i i feel like especially for those of you who are like women okay or or the feminine energy so you could be aries women um, you might be, you know, you, you might be into more of like dancing, drinking, socializing, wanting to go to holiday parties and, and things like that. Okay. Um, like wanting to be that life of the party and you have somebody coming in. Okay. A more masculine energy, somebody who's very sweet, somebody coming in 
and uh, they go to these events with you, you know, like once or twice. And they're not the life of the party. They, they, they refrain from drinking. And you're just like, oh, that person's kind of boring. And then if you really give them a chance, I feel like they're going to take you out of your comfort zone into some hobbies, some things that they're really good at. So, for example, I do see... Um, <laughs> I do see some women, Aries women, wearing high heels, okay? Like red pumps, high heels, like really, really high, like stilettos. And then I see like this man coming in and he's all like, why don't you, um, you know, hang out with me Saturday? It'll be a surprise. And he takes you fishing, okay? So you're like thinking that you're going to go somewhere and he takes you fishing. And you're like, have, uh, you're, you're trekking around, possibly in the mud, in your high heels. And then, you know, he takes you fishing and you have an amazing time, okay? So I feel like you should definitely give this person a chance, okay? So that's what I'm seeing here. And the image came out very vividly when I was looking at this Eight of Swords, where somebody is um, communicating with you and then you're not responding to half of their messages because you're just not that into them. And then... If that's the case, give them a chance. You're gonna have a really good time, like a screaming good time. And you're gonna look at them in a new light, okay? So I do feel something here that has a lot of potential. Just give it a chance, okay? Because there's more than meets the eye. There's a, a lot more facets to this person. There's a lot more things to be uncovered, okay? And so that's what I'm seeing here. Um, for those who are like in a relationship who are couple I do feel there's this um I, I see this this um watch on a on a wrist okay and then somebody is like pointing at the watch like when's the time when's the time so I, I do see this whole concept of like you know when are we getting married when are we getting engaged when are we moving in together when am I going to meet your parents so Aries, you guys like to do things in a very straightforward and very, very linear manner, okay? You guys are like the most straightforward people in the entire zodiac. You don't have time for nonsense. You don't have time for like contemplation. You don't like it when people are indirect, okay? When people drag their feet, when people take their time, I get it. Um, you, don't, you, you don't like to have to wait. And you want to just, you know, find the shortest route from A to B. And I, I do feel like you're dealing with someone who's very methodical, who, who likes to, you know, really take their sweet time and it's aggravating for you. So I do see a relationship here where it's like, you know, like a three year, a five year engagement. And it's like, when are we tying the knot? When am I going to be able to be a bride or a groom? Okay. Like, what are you waiting for? Um, shouldn't you want me? Shouldn't you want to progress with this? So, like, I'm seeing that energy here where there's a little bit of frustration uh, from your end about somebody who's dragging their feet. I also see um, an element. Sorry, I'm moving in the chair, okay? So it's making funny noises. Um, an element about somebody getting impatient, about somebody wanting to take things to the next level, wanting to, you know... Um, I'm seeing like somebody wants to take a trip, somebody, possibly you, page of wands, your energy, fire energy, somebody wanting to take a trip and then the other person is all like, uh, let me think about it, um, my work might not, I, I don't know if my work is going to be able to let me take the time off, okay, so this is the four of pentacles, somebody clinging on very tightly to their resources, okay, somebody who's like very workaholic. And they're just like, uh, I don't know if, you know, I've accrued enough vacation days. I don't know if my job is going to be able to allow me to take time off during that season that you want to go on this trip. I don't know if my financial resources will allow me to spend that much money in uh, on this trip. They have the money. They just have a lot of things, a lot of hangups about work ethics. They, they think that like being a good worker means you don't ever take vacation. You don't ever call in sick, even if you're like on your deathbed, you know. And so you're dealing with someone who has a, a little bit of a distorted sense when it comes to responsibility. Um, in their defense, I feel like, you know, work, jobs, 
and um, just jobs have not been easy to come by for this person so they might be in a job where you know they finally feel like they've made it and they don't want to do anything to screw up their prospects in this job so they're trying to do everything by the book they're trying to be a team player they're trying to I want to say as well uh, they're 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 trying to project themselves as like the model employee because they've never had a lot of opportunity they haven't had a lot of opportunities in the past and so you're itching to want to travel to want to you know spend your pentacles and to uh, have this amazing experience and they're always busy they're always I don't feel they're making excuses I feel like work is like their number one priority because you know they're really trying to be good in in the work that they do and so you might be dealing with that in a partner and you're getting a little bit frustrated okay um i feel I feel that this is not somebody who's very spontaneous or at least their job is not flexible enough for them to, you know, take off like, um, take off a week, you know, within like a week's notice. So this is something that you have to plan with this person, you know, give them a month and tell them, I want to go on this date a month from now, ask your um, boss now, ask your supervisor now and let me know and then we can plan things moving forward so I, I do sense that you have to give them more of a heads up you can't be you know uh, on a whim you can't do things impulsively and then expect this person to be able to accommodate based on their work schedule so it's not that they don't want to they really really want to they want to communicate they want to take that trip with you they want to share that new experience with you but there are some things that are tying them up okay I, I feel like literally being tied up um, I also feel like this person is um, for those in a serious relationship I do see an element of a proposal or, or escalation of the relationship okay so like taking things to the next level that's coming into the picture but this person is trying to build that up for you they're trying to build up their financial resources so for example if you're planning to move in they're thinking about you know maybe saving up like working a lot of overtime working a lot save up and being there they're in the meantime they're making a lot of sacrifices to be thrifty to save up a lot of money so that they can buy a property and before you move in with them or you know saving up for that engagement ring before you um, before they they asked you saving up and have a really really good time on the trip to be able to afford everything that they want to to do you know all the activities on this trip because they might not be able to take a lot of vacations so they want this trip to be perfect they want it to be extravagant they want it to be like you know to not have to worry about finances when they're on the trip to be able to afford everything that they want to do and everything that you want to do and so you have to be a little bit more understanding um, about this person's financial state I also feel a situation where somebody really wants to take care of you okay you could be male or female your partner really wants to take care of you your partner really wants to like uh, have everything foundationally stable in their financial sector in order to be able to take care of you and so that's why they're dragging their feet and that's why they're you know um, you might feel like they're not very fun not very spontaneous not very like um, willing to do things you might feel like they're a little bit of a homebody and those things might be true but I also feel a big part of it is that they're trying to uh, appear very very serious and they feel that you know they they need to reach a certain milestone or a certain summit in their own financial or professional life before they can breathe okay it's sort of like coming out of the the dense fog hiking up the trail and then as soon as you reach the top the sky clears up you're at a point where your skies have cleared up and they're not there yet so just imagine before you reach that summit what life felt like how heavy things things felt how cold and damp and uncomfortable it was for you and this is where the, that other person is 
And so they're not in a position where they can be spontaneous, where they can throw caution to the wind, where they can, you know, give like a two weeks notice and go on a long, extensive vacation. So everything has to be lined up. All their ducks have to be lined up. All their pentacles have to be stacked up. I'm seeing like poker chips, you know, some of you might be very good at poker. All the poker chips have to be, you know, put in piles, sorted out based on their value before this person can make a major, major uh, um, turning point in their life, okay? And so I just want you to be a little bit patient with this person if you're dealing with them. If you're dealing with, you know, that really sweet person that's um, giving you a lot of, um, is giving you a lot of communication, and you're just like, ah, oh, they seem a little bit bland or vanilla. Give up a chance. You're going to be pleasantly surprised. If you're dealing with this person who you feel is like stick in the mud, not very spontaneous, and you're getting frustrated, give it some time as well. Because I feel like they're going to really, they're really going to amaze you. Okay. Um, they're thinking about, you know, um, for the long haul. Okay, so I, I do see they're very serious minded. This person's really fun over here. This person is very serious minded. And not that they're down in the dumps and, and not fun. I just feel like, you know, when they feel financially stable, they can be really fun. They can be very generous. And um, they can give you everything that you want. And funnily enough, you're in a position where you don't need anybody to take care of you. I feel like finances is going swimmingly well for many of you Aries. If anything, you even want to, you know, um, take this person on a trip. You even might want to pay for this person because you might not be aware of how much, how wobbly their financial situation is. It's not that they're, it's not that they don't have the financial resources. It's just in their mind, they want a lot more. And so you might even be in a position where you're just like, I have all this money, you know, I can uh, even pay for you. I can even pay for your trip. And so you don't see what the big deal is, but I feel like this person is not somebody that wants to leech or mooch off other people because they're responsible and they wouldn't feel right to not be able to give you. So that's where they're at. So be patient, okay? Um, I do see proposal and things like that coming into the picture. We have here the Queen of Pentacles. This is like wedding day. This is like being offered some a, a, a very, very major commitment. Okay, so for many of you, the relationship is definitely escalating to the next level. The relationship is being stabilized and solidified. Okay, so I do sense there's going to be that sense coming into the picture for many of you in the month of December. And I also feel that somebody really sees you as um, marriage material, okay? You can be male or female watching this. They, they want to take the relationship to the next level. They are probably very aware that you have a lot of suitors and you have a lot of options, that you're you know pretty much the, the life of the party and that a lot of people aren't interested in you. But I feel like they're not will they're not wanting you to be the one that that uh, got away, and so they're they're planning and scheming and you know trying to get everything um, sorted out in their own life before they take that next that that um, before they take things to the next level. Okay. Um, the last two cards that I have here, I have the Fool, turning over a new leaf, starting on a blank brand new chapter in your life and we have the six of um, pentacles and the six of pentacles is all about reciprocating okay um this is a card about generosity and kindness and i do sense you know in the traditional rider weight deck is the 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 man giving money to the poor right um what i i mentioned earlier was that i did see this person wants to give you everything. You don't need them to give you everything. You need very specific things from them. You want them to travel with you. You want to share experiences together. But for some reason, every time you propose something, this person, it's like you, you reach some type of resistance and you don't understand like where it's coming from. 
it's not that they don't feel strongly for you. They want to be able to fund this trip, to fund this endeavor, so that you don't have to, you know, pay for anything. But you're in a position where you can take care of yourself financially. You don't need them to pay for you. So I feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect when it comes to communication between you and this person. And honestly, as fire signs, we tend to gloss over a lot of the logistics. We tend to, um, I wanna say like, um, it's hard for us to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes and to understand what they're struggling with. And I, I, I do sense that there needs to be more communication, okay? And with the Six of Pentacles, that's what it means. It means being able to sympathize and empathize and put yourself in the other person's shoes. Why are they, um, you know, hesitant? Why, are, why aren't they spontaneous? Why aren't they willing to take this extravagant trip with me? We're going to have so much fun. Well, the, the point is, it is an extravagant endeavor. And so they need to get things lined up. So I feel like that's the message they want to tell you. And so knowing that you're reaching resistance with this person, not because they don't feel for you, but because things are wobbly in their life. What can you do to make things less wobbly in their life? What can you offer? What can you give back? What can you propose to this person so that things are not wobbly? So I do feel it is about giving to this person, maybe financially, maybe if this is something that you really want to do and just ask them, you know, I'll pay for it. Okay, like be in that space where you can, I guess, anticipate what this person is struggling with so that you can kind of like smooth away their worries. Does that make sense? Because I feel like that's going to propel your relationship to the next level because this person is not able to voice that or they, they, they might feel like, you know, so for example, I, I feel like, you know, there might be uh, stereotypical like gender roles, okay? So it's somebody who's like, oh, I, I wear the pants in this relationship, I should pay for everything, something like that. And so they don't want you to have to pay, but I, I feel that things need to be balanced out here because a lot of weight and a lot of pressure is on this person, okay? So Aries, I am going to leave it at that. And I hope the reading resonates with you. I hope that it is helpful. And I hope that um, as you navigate through the month of December, that you take the advice, okay? If it resonates, um, I feel like it might, um, help with it, it it might help you with uh give you like a sense of direction depending on who you're dealing with to give you a sense of direction as to which partner to choose even and then how to i want to say like um come together with another person and have a more harmonious relationship okay so i will leave it at that and i wish you all the best have a wonderful holiday season and I'll be back next uh, next year and next month for your uh, January reading. Okay, how exciting. Have a wonderful New Year's as well. And I hope you all end 2019 with a bang. Okay, so take care of yourself. I'll talk to you soon.